So, welcome Thank to the you. podcast. And let's jump into the beginning, Nick. How did you end up in the Netherlands? Um, I said yes. <laughs> what does That's it how. So uh, I had a, I graduated uh, oh, okay. and then I had a job for, as a product manager in a Singapore company. It was making sound, audio cards, sound cards, as we call it. So back then, your computer didn't make sound unless you have a sound card on it. Okay. So that's the beginning. So after a year, um, uh, as a product manager, um, one day my boss called me in and said, hey, your project is... Oh, so sorry, that, that I had a one-year project that's slightly different uh, in servers and things. So after that project, the boss said, hey, we have an opening in Netherlands. Um, would you like to go? Uh, he didn't say Netherlands. He said, I have an opening in Europe. Would you like to go? And my answer was when? Wow! Uh, so you jumped in? Yeah, wow! Well, yeah, so <laughs> I just said when? And uh, then he said, how about next week? I said, okay. And then <laughs> it is. So it is about saying yes, right? So I didn't. So when I went back to my friends, I said, did you negotiate a pay package? I said, what? Negotiate? I'm fine. I love this <laughs> opportunity. So saying yes, open doors, and you can say, in my whole career, I've said a lot of yes, and you never know what it brings you. That's very true. Yeah, and some of that leads to nowhere. Some of that goes up. But of course, if you have too much things, that's another topic. Uh, but uh, keep an open mind and be positive. And just say yes. Yeah. And just say yes. That's perfect. Yeah, I mean, don't just say yes. Say <laughs> yes like you mean it. Yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> like what you mean. Actually, mean it. Mean, don't just say yes. Just go for it. Just go for it. The go for it mentality. Okay, I yeah. like that. Um, okay, let's me maybe start going even back when I first met you. Yeah. Actually, it was at Venture Cafe Rotterdam and you had an info table and you were doing yes. a crowd funding for Travis the Translator. Thank you for being the early supporters. I was there and I, it was Beautiful. amazing. And, and I remember um, at that time that you, you were doing this crowdfunding on an... an uh, on the table and showing yeah. the, uh, the prototype of it. How did you start that? Why did you start a device for translation? Yeah, so what started was uh, to backtrack a little bit. Um, I think not many people know yet the story behind it. Um, so I met Leonard and Brent uh, at Venture Cafe. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> See, community power. Yeah. The ecosystem, I, okay, so for those of you who know Ben Venture Cafe, please come on every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> then you know what we are talking about, but otherwise you do not know. Those, who, those of you who come regularly, yes, let's talk. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, exactly, um, I uh, Leonard was the Venture Cafe program manager at the time. So I spent about 2016 um, I just came back from America. Uh, Rocky went with Rocky to Techstars in America. Techstars is the world's best uh, accelerator. Um, so we were very happy to be able to go there in Boston. So um, we reached a little bit of plateau with Rocky in America, raising funds. And so I decided to come back and figure out what is the next step. Yeah. So in figuring what is the next step, I wasn't setting a goal. Because how can you know what is the next step if you don't open your mind? So and at that time, I know that Venture Cafe is a formula from, it's, not, uh, it's, it's very well known in Boston. So Cambridge, Massachusetts, so Cambridge Innovation Center, it's got its roots there. So when I know that Venture Cafe is in Rotterdam, I said, I shall go there and I shall come in. So I came here, I did not talk about Rocky, I did not talk about startup, I did not talk about anything, I had no mission, no goals. This is coming, join the community, give forward. Um, and I think that it's not networking. I don't like to use the word networking. It's literally looking for people, like-minded people, build relationships, and let's see what comes out of that. So that was the basis. I came every week, signed up from ambassadorship. <laughs> like nice. most people do, yeah. you know, they come a few times, yeah. oh, how can I help? Yeah. Yeah. You sign up ambassadorship, you greet people, help tap bar, because that's the community, how the community grows itself. And, and after that, one more step forward, I asked like, what can I do more? Um, he said, can you give, do you have skills, ex knowledge, experience to give? Oh, I, I have experience in crowdfunding. I've done two crowdfunding before. Uh, I've advised uh, a major corporate crowdfunding before as well. So 
I can teach crowdfunding in a summer sessions. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I started a summer session. I came here every week, uh, and there was a ten crowdfunding sessions in uh, that I did in summer. And today, some of these people who came to the crowdfunding session are still uh, very good friends, and a couple of them became co-creators, co-founders. And you know, Kamuila. Uh, yeah. So it's become Bento Kai's uh, with micro creator join me on the Bolaro adventure, and we have more adventures lined up too. Yeah, I love how uh, you can build yeah, a relation. It literally, it's not one story. There was no motive, but an open mind. Give forward, join the community, and find your like-minded people. So, not to skip the story, let's come back to the story of uh, at the end of two thousand sixteen. Um, Leonard was looking for uh, to join. He, so he was a program manager for venture capital, but he wanted to get into the action himself with entrepreneurship. So. Um, so that's the opportunity we started talking. Um, along the way, so that, so that's one moment. Another moment was at one of the ambassador's appreciation, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this is a guy called Brad who showed up. He had he was from earlier days of looking at consulting or how to implement the the concept of venture cafe from Boston to Rotterdam. So he was also at the Venture Cafe Appreciation Night and at that time the Managing Director of Venture Cafe, Katya, yeah. uh, introduced uh, who everybody is and then at the beer, um, drinking, you know, uh, <laughs> Brent, uh, Brent came up to me and said, are you Nick? From Rocky. I said, huh, I almost never mentioned Rocky. Oh wow. How did <laughs> he said, he... how do you know? I said, do you know Michael Lins? I said, yes, he's one of my angels, a solid super supporter. I said, yeah, when he wanted to invest in Rocky, he consulted me. Oh, wow. Such a small world, right? I was just going to say it. It's really small, so everybody knows everybody. And it's, So, you know, it's not about networking. It's about relationship. And you never know where they are. That's why the open mentality, the positivity, always be who you are, be the, the best who you are, because it, you're, you're leaving your footprint everywhere. That's you true. do not know it. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, don't look at it in the short term, look at it in the long term. So, we follow, Brent and I follow up on a conversation of how it is difficult to get started. Uh, startup is, you know, you're always pitching ideas. The investors say, well, it's tra- where is attraction? You juggle jobs, trying to create attraction. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and one of the reasons why we took Rocky to America, we took Rocky to Kickstarter, um, and went to New York to do the Kickstarter was in 2013 when we were launching Rocky. There was no such ecosystem here. There was uh, no venture cafe. There was very early days for angel investing. Very early days for VC. VCs were mostly PEP uh, people who, who are more like uh, family funds. They are not as high risk taking. So when we did Kickstarter, very few people knew Kickstarter in Netherlands. So in 2013, that's why. My co-founder and I, who is a Dutch guy also, um, decided to say if we were to have a chance, we need to go to New York. Um, B, where the cow you know, city of culture, digital culture is, um, we have a chance. And then it worked out well and later on we found our way to tech stars uh, and that's why the Rocky Adventure was in America, uh-huh. not Netherlands. Oh, wow. Despite being a Dutch, two so-called, I'm a so-called Dutch founder, you know, so I feel Dutch in entrepreneurship and all. And a Dutch founder, we went to America. So coming back, you see everything is like, that's also why I'm very interested and very vested in like how to help entrepreneurs here, how to give forward to the ecosystem here, because I don't want people to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, because you yeah. have to go through it and now you make exactly. it easier. Okay. For... I, I, I can bring something back and then give forward again. So there was a conversation with Brent about, you know, how can we help entrepreneurs with our knowledge? Uh, Brent is good at uh, managing, good at uh, project management, good at uh, network connections and uh, smart ideas and also about startups, how would... So the two of us talked a lot and said, maybe there's a way to launch products fast. Yeah. You know, VR things like that. So you take existing, create an idea, but don't create from scratch, don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah, um, yeah. Do your 10%, 20%, 50% idea on existing things, uh, reinvent that uh, and launch it and see if there's market for it. If there's no market for it, 
that. So that's what you did with Travis, the translator. Yes. Yeah, so I remember when I saw you on, this was one guy on the info table and uh, you were showing everybody the, stereo, uh, the prototype. And then this guy came to you and he was asking you questions about like, where did you start and uh, where do you uh, produce this? And he said, and he, you told him from China and he said, oh, oh are you not afraid that uh, Chinese, they're gonna re um, uh, copy you and do it? I remember you said, no. Why would I be afraid of that? I am not afraid that people will copy me. I'm afraid that people will copy me, add something new that I didn't think about and take it to the next level. That's what I'm afraid. Yeah. Let people copy me. And then I thought to myself, this guy is it. This guy is really has it. He's smart. So we, we go to this copy topic first before then, then we come back to okay. the story. So copy thing, I have a, I have a strong I have a strong belief in this one. So most people are afraid to tell people their idea. Um, Yes, don't tell people when it's early, you know, so, but when you're ready to go market, you have to tell everyone. So you have to buy yourself time window first, you know, to work on something, but by the time you tell everyone, you can be, you have to be prepared within three to six months, somebody will copy you. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So don't be afraid. If you're afraid, then you don't tell anyone, how are you going to get market? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It's going to be... <laughs> It's gonna, I was just gonna say, it's gonna be you and your mom and nobody. No, exactly. So, and the idea is based on the, the, the belief that if you have a good idea, you have a good product, why won't anybody copy you? It's making money, of course everybody wants to, to have that. If there's nobody copying you, you actually have to ask, is this a good idea after all? <laughs> yeah, that's a good nobody one. Nobody wants to copy it. <laughs> it's it's a not good, worth copying. It's a good one. It's actually a so good one. So, with a good idea, you have different kinds of people copying it, right? So, I would say inspired. So good people, good entrepreneurs, those A, A type of entrepreneurs, they will look at the idea and say, oh, they get inspired. They'll use the idea and create something of their own. That's true. Cool. Then you have a good competitor. Yeah. <laughs> and that is not a direct competition. We'll see how that goes. Those are a challenge. Oh, nice. The B type will make, will try to improve a little bit or do an exact copy of it or so. And it's usually hard to copy. Compete. Uh, maybe get better resources. Uh, yeah. Then you have to watch out for that. Yeah. The C type will just make a knockoff, and those you don't have to worry about. You, if you have to worry about knockoffs, then there are different ways to ensure you are always a better product than the knockoffs. If you can't be a better product than knockoffs, maybe you shouldn't start. Oh yeah, <laughs> good one. <laughs> no, Try so, something so new. So for that, uh, if you are having doubts about how to do this, by all means, always come to Venture Cafe. Ask for me. Um, ask around. I'm happy to give at least half an hour, uh, align a little bit one on one with how you could make sure you always have the best product out there. So coming back to, so with Brent and I, we were talking about that, how to start, start this fast, um, do projects for three to six months, um, see if there's a market, and when there's a market, then let's go to the investors and say, look at the data, people want this. And then you find investors to scale, grow the product. So you have the launch. Then you have the growth. Okay, any last thought, any call of action that you want to end this podcast with? Call to action, come to Venture Cafe, let's talk. Wow. Any last advice to entrepreneurs? Um, Especially the young ones? Uh, entrepreneurship? Yeah, 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 for the young ones. Um, do it for a reason. Don't do it, don't, don't do it to get rich. Don't do it because you want to have a unicorn or but do it because there's some something some problem you feel you need to solve. No. Oh, that's beautiful. Do it for a reason that's something that you don't think about the money, you don't think about If you do it right, you do it for the right reason and you have the right you are the right person to solve it because you die to do it, you're very really passionate about it. Money will show up. Maybe not huge riches of money but the support will come from crowd or investors or there are many don't just think of investors think of how are you going to fund this once you're passionate about it uh, it tends to be that you will find support if you're just doing it for money yes okay you can also but there's a different way uh, that's not my advice uh, other people might advise you to do that but i won't advise you to do that i would advise you to do something you truly believe in because then you can your passion to show through, then you don't have those conflict of interest of work life balance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good one. If that show up, then understand there is something yeah. going on.
Nick, thank you very thank much you. for coming. Really, it has been an honor talking to you. Um, you're amazing at all the success, 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 and all, all the projects that you're doing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.